In this video, we're going to jump back into code and we're going to learn a little bit more about functions. We're going to get deeper into functions. And uh, well, what we're going to cover is I have some notes here. We're going to learn about creating our own custom functions. We're going to learn how functions hold code in stasis until we activate it. And that uh, the process of activating a function, if you will, is called calling functions. We're going to, anyway. It's it's it sounds more complex than it really is. We're going to look at function returns and how to pass data from one function to another. Basically, passing data has to do with function arguments. I think we've we've looked at that in the past. So we're going to learn how to do this with our own custom functions, and we're going to get a better idea of what it's all about, really. And finally, we're going to look at variables and function scope. This is something we have not discussed before. And it's, uh, it's kind of important to understand. Along the way, we'll probably learn a few more things. And uh, yeah, so break out your text editor and uh, get ready to write some JavaScript code. So we are looking at our very familiar script here. I think, uh, I think we did this in the arrays videos. Anyhow, so we've seen this before. And these source files, of course, are included in the source files directory if you're looking for it. So the first thing I want to teach you is the idea of separating your JavaScript code from your body code. The body code meaning the code in between the body and the body tags at the bottom of the page here. Let me just uh, get that into view. So the idea here is to you want to remove and separate your JavaScript from your main body code. So I'm just going to copy that out. And you want to put it in the head here. There you go. And the reason you want to do this is it's always just a good idea to keep your JavaScript outside of the main action here in the body. This is a lot like CSS where you don't want to have your JavaScript code in the body of your web page. And like CSS, you can insert it up here in between your head tags, or you can actually link to an external JavaScript file, just like you would link to an external CSS document. I'm going to show you how to do that later on. But for now, just keep that in mind. You want to keep your JavaScript code as much as possible separate from your HTML code that you see uh, in the body here. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to create a custom function for ourselves, And that's, that's pretty easy. So I'm just going to take this, I'm going to indent it a little bit, make it cleaner. And I'm going to just write the word function. I'm going to give it a name. Uh, I'm going to call it products array. Or, you know, I'll give it a better name. I'll call it product list. It's a little bit more user friendly. So we got the two round brackets. And we got the curly. So I'm going to take the curlies, just like an if statement or a loop. Take one, put it on the bottom here. So this curly brace and this curly brace demarks the beginning and the end of this particular function. And the function packages up all this JavaScript code in one neat package. So now we could use this code over and over again by simply calling this function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to call functions. But before we do that, let me just save that. Let me load up the page. Now, here is our page loaded up pre-functionalizing pre it. So what I mean by functionalizing it is uh, sticking it in a function. This is how our code, if you loaded up the page, it would immediately print up the array, right? Because when you have this code floating around, this for loop printed up whatever was in this array, and we got it here. But by sticking it in a function now, now that it's in a function, this code will not be activated, will not be fired off by the web browser until we specifically say, run this function product underscore list. So now let's look at the code as it is now, where the function is not being called, but we've encapsulated, we've wrapped up all this code inside the function. We'll see what happens. 
Well, what's going to happen, what we should see what happens, we won't see anything printed here. So let's just load this up. And of course, nothing is printed, right? Because the function now basically pulls all this code here out of the game. It will not be fired off by the browser until we actually tell it to run this function. So how do we do that? How do we run this function? One of the easy ways is to use an event handler. So let's do that. So on the title, I'm going to create a new, a new tag here. I'm going to put an H3. And we'll complete that. And I'm going to say show list. So this is our cheap little button. So we're going to show list. And then we're going to go um, make it like this. So we're going to do it at our event handler. So we're going to go on click. We've seen this before. And I'm going to say product list. So that's our name of our function, right? Product list. So this basically tells us when we click on this show list text, this tag, run the product underscore list function. So let's take a look at that. So let me reload the page, show list. Let's click it. And here we go. You see how it works. Our array is uh, printed out. So do it again. Bang. So there you go. Here's a simple example where we've taken our code, we've wrapped it in a custom function. I just gave the name product list. I can call it whatever you want. And the behavior that you should understand from this is that once your code is wrapped inside of a function, as we did here, the code will no longer run automatically as it did before. It has to be called explicitly by us. We have to say, hey, run this particular function. So now you see what I was talking about when I said that um, right here, when I said that functions hold code in stasis until we activate it. And we activate it by calling a function. Calling a function is like doing what we did here with the on click. We called the product list function. You can think of it as calling as, you know, calling somebody over. It's, uh, you know, nerds when they've put together programming languages and so forth, they they use they come up with these terms and for whatever reason. So I'm just trying to help you understand why they use certain terms. Like why did they say call a function as opposed to activate? I don't know. But you know what calling a function is now. You understand the stasis idea of code until it's called, if you have it in a function. And you understand when we took this out of a function, we went like this. Now the code is just sitting there. If I reload the page, it will print it out right away.